This video features live commentary from day two of the December Spring Championship qualifier, and after the video I will give a few of my thoughts after the fact, and there will also be information on how you can enter on a giveaway for a 700 gem bundle for Storybook Brawl. Enjoy. And we get a pretty horrible hero. We're going to be playing Mad Catter, and we're going to be trying to salvage the results from yesterday, I believe. There is also some temptation to just say, okay, Mrs. Claus, everything has plus one, plus one, rather than random stuff has slightly higher bonuses. But I think Mad Catter will for the most part, lead to um, some earlier places. And I'm kind of excited to do do Mad Catter a little bit more justice uh, with a run back here, where I don't just doom roll for polywoggles on levels four and five. And, um, and uh, not really do much with it. So, free roll is great with Mad Catter. That is how you really start to win the lobbies. Here we can pick up an egg, and now we've got a 9-9. <laughs> when, uh, this, this, is, this is like the best unit anybody can possibly have. Merlin could theoretically trade with us. If they take an egg and then take a free roll, they could... We could be smashing eggs here, which would be very, very awkward, but... For the most part, this should probably be the most powerful minion that anybody's making. More powerful than Grandmother could make, that's for sure. 9-9 nine, nine egg, we take those. Uh, so now here, we could make a 10-10 ten, ten egg. That's a thing, like, sugar and spice is just about as good as... Um just rolling again with Mad Catter. And then the question is, do we want to put the sugar and spice on the Sure Shot, on the Cindy, or do we want to grab the Cindy? I think I'm fine grabbing Cindy. And then making a 10-10. Now let's diversify our threat level a little bit here and just do this. That seemed to happen a little bit quicker than normal. Well, we win this fight regardless, so that's nice. And we're bullying the lobby a little bit here. That's what Mad Catter is supposed to do. Here's where things start to fall off just a wee bit, where we have to figure out, like, do we want to take two units? Do I want to cast Magic Research, roll, and then buy whatever we roll into. I think I like that as well. Because one of the reasons that, or one of the ways that Mad Catter starts to look good, and I'm going to lock a free roll. Um, one of the ways that Mad Catter starts to work well is if you only are really playing buffed up units. And that can only happen if you're not just spending all your gold buying two units on every turn. And I think my board is more powerful than had we just picked up a happy little tree and a unicorn. So feeling pretty good about this one. We're still going to be winning combats. We've still got our 9-9 egg. Bully in the lobby. Only undefeated player. I don't hate Shadow Assassin. Just as a 2-4. But I'm going to roll and potentially get a buff on a 3 cost unit. Alright, that's nice. And now I think we support this egg with a good witch. It's a little bit risky to be second uniting our egg, but a 6-6 six, six is really big. A 10-5 is quite gnarly as well. I think we'll probably wind up transitioning slightly into dwarves, but uh, definitely feeling strong and feeling confident for now. So... I like where this is headed. This is the Mad Catter game that I wanted everyone to put some respect on the name of here. And I don't believe my opponent can crack my egg bearing extreme luck towards hitting the... Yeah, now they can't crack the egg at all. So nice. 
We're hitting people for seven damage. You gotta love that too. Uh, we could take a Wish Upon a Star. I guess this was a um, mask. Because we had Mrs. Claus as an option. I'm very tempted to Wish Upon a Star. The play is either probably Fanny, Roll, Buy a 3-Drop, or Wish and hope that this is enough against the second place player in the lobby. I think I'm going to play it safe, especially because we've got an egg, and if we lose this egg, once we lose this egg, we lose a lot of our power on this board. So let's go Fanny, roll, 3-drop, and now I'm going to frontline this Fanny, because that got a buff, and I think I just stick with this. I could see taking the Creeper, I could see... Taking the Ogre Princess. Oh, I bought a two drop. Let's roll and lock. That was really close. Uh, we can kiss the egg now. That transfers a lot of our stats. All right, they are going for a Wish Upon a Star. And let's see, will either of us crack our egg? We will both crack our egg, but they will not get their wish. That's fine because we were going to um, destroy that egg here anyways. We can also TLK the Shadow Assassin. I don't hate that. Yeah, let's do that. That gives a lot of power to our board. And we got a Greedy. Okay, so now we are, like, most certainly Dwarves. Um, is this better? Possibly. And then let's roll and probably lock, especially if it lands on a Dwarf. It lands on a Vampire. 7-7 seven, seven Vampire is not the worst thing in the world. It is a double. So next turn, you gotta look at your coin. You can, yeah, I totally forgot that I wound up buying a two drop so that I still had a, a roll left in me. Um, in general, I think it's pretty good to lock on Mad Catter. I think we could do something here like pick up, pick up the vampire, roll, and then buy a four drop next turn. The thing is, 7-7 seven, is not that much bigger than a 5-5, five, five. so I don't really know how much better we're making our board. We're probably going to roll, but, but we'll buy a Dwarf, that's the thing, we'll buy a Dwarf in a fresh shop. This is, we're definitely setting ourselves up to Dwarf right now, that's a big hit. Um, we're going to be taking some damage from this Shore Shot this turn, unfortunately. Our Fannies are not going to be able to make it out of this one. So we lose our first combat down to 32. Merlin is definitely a good early game hero. I think Falling Stars is fine. It buffs this and Greedy. The Sphinx is going to have a free turn here. Could also take a Darkwood Creeper. Don't really think I'm interested in that. Oh, I've got nine gold this turn. That's interesting. Let's start with this. Let's roll, purchase. Yeah, I like Ogre Princess. Oh, do I want a... Do I want a 5-5? Five five? No, it's smaller than a 2-3. I think I could go like this. I think that's fine. All right, let's roll one more time. Pick up a dwarf here. No, we have big soul tack. We have big soul tack and little soul tack. Uh, court wizard's a really good thing to get our buff onto. Let's roll one more time. We can sell this spell weaver. That's also a really huge unit. I think I might just buy doubly here, though. Uh, yeah, this is where things start to fall off a little bit. See if we can lock something good in the last second. I couldn't see it. I think it landed on a prized pig, which I wasn't particularly excited about while my opponent with Ring of Meteors as well there. Um, all right, they've got a, they got a decent board here, and we're not going to be attacking with our ranged unit, so we're going to be losing this combat pretty heavily. 
13 damage down to 19. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes from the Sphinx. Okay, well, this is good. This is really good here now. To be able to take Tweedledum. There's also a Mask Ball here, but I think I'm going to go D. That's just a big power spike. Uh, I'd probably play this, this or something. And then I think I Mask Ball. There's still two fives here. I wanted to pick up the Tweedle, though. Yeah, angry, and then another Tweedle. That's really good. So, if we sell three things, which we can do, then we can pick up another Tweedle. We're going to play this. Oh, no, yeah, we're going to put the Tweedles here. So, I guess this can be this. Um... Might as well be... Oh, I guess we have Angry. Maybe we do just keep... We just play a full line of Dwarves. Okay. Dwarven Pivot. Totally missed the fact that there's a Princess White here. Um, maybe that's how much respect we need to give to Princess White right now. Uh, it is a shame that it, I did not buy it to start off this turn. Maybe I do lock it, though. That's tricky. It's probably better than this unit, just because if you can get a buff off of the Angry, that really compounds itself. My opponent with the Dwarven Forge going to interrupt us a little bit here, but we're definitely still bigger than um, this Wonder Waddle right now. 36 is a lot on this Tweedle. So, oh yeah, maybe we're not bigger. Yeah, no, we're smaller. We're smaller, we lose. Oh, wow, it's a tie. That is a really close tie. That is super close. Okay. And that's the second place player in the lobby. All right, let's go Princess White first. Then let's pick up a Tier 4 treasure. Let's maybe get our own Dwarven Forge. No, that's too much to ask. Okay. I think Coin is just a good treasure. Let's go Genie's Wish. That's not bad. Let's roll... This would have been better, of course. Do we want to sell two things to pick up a Lucky? Not particularly. I think we'll wind up... I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but let's just roll and, and let it roll. Yeah, kind of silly to pick up uh, two Dwarves and then pick up the Princess White. I honestly, my eyes just glazed over it. I totally missed it. But I think that we should still want to pick it up here. Throw on some music. Great. Now we're cooking. Two huge hits brought us down to a pretty low life total. And unfortunately, we're going to take some more big hits here. This, um, this mummy is making pants quite big. We have, we have certainly fallen off quite a bit. We're going to take 10 from pants. That's not great. Did Horde Dragon die, though? Okay, somebody died, not Horde Dragon. We're, like, failing to get the buffs on from the angry here every time. The same time Merlin's test, giving that plus four, plus four, is probably just the biggest thing we can do. I think I want to bet on angry, though. Let's do this, and then roll for some potential buffed dwarves. It's not a bad unit. Okay, that's a buffed dwarf, though, for sure. One more roll. Can't do anything with that. Could lock Polywoggle, or could roll and potentially lock. Wow, Merlin's already six, because they grabbed some XP. The Sphinx is still on five. We're up against Trophy Hunter. I am... 
basically just debating this wish upon a star here. I think we can afford it. I think we either lose this combat or we're as strong as we think we are and we win this combat. And we've just played the top three players in this lobby, in which case maybe we can actually grow our board and, and do some nice stuff. Um, Tweedledee getting the coin of Sharon is a lot of stats to help us win this combat. Their baby bear is going to slay because of Sporko, but their second baby bear will not be able to slay. And then it's just a matter of if their Romeo can slay. And I think it will. I think it will be able to slay here. Yeah. Oh, no, it can't. Okay, nice. So we avoid the Romeo slay, but we do lose the combat to the second Romeo slay. Okay. We take seven down to two, but that's fine. Now are we playing the ghost? We're playing the horde dragon. I think I have to count that as potentially as good as the ghost. Uh, but it's it's worth potentially just trying to play for seventh place here, or sixth place rather than seventh. I'm gonna wish though. Doubly is interesting. We can't cast falling stars, that would have been big. I think I just take doublies to try to set myself up for some kind of savior on the next turn. Uh, I'm gonna sell Ogre Princess and then if I can find Tiny and potentially get a Ring of Meteors, that could be good. Dwarf Spell, nothing, okay. So we didn't wind up hitting but it's just a matter of if our dwarves are good enough. Unfortunately, the angry hasn't gotten any of the coins of Sharon, which you'd think is good, but one time the, the random tiny got sniped. That wasn't good. Okay, that's great, though. That means that angry is going to get the buff and then potentially even... Or, or it's going to give the buff and then potentially get the buff. It's not going to... It's not going to give the buff, unfortunately. But as long as we can battle past this bear stain, which I think we've got the stats to do, um, we're looking pretty good here. Yeah, we beat the bear stain. We beat the horde dragon. We are a top six gamer, and now we're tier six. We just need to find a lordy. A lot of dwarves in this lobby. A dwarven mine and a dwarven forge from somebody else. Okay. Don't hate greedy, but we need to find lordy to live. Not to get dramatic. There's a dwarf. This can be a big game. There are trees probably at this point. Um, unfortunately, this only sees one six. And because we're Mad Catter, we are incentivized to roll. Okay, that could be a really nice pickup though. Let's sell Tiny. Let's purchase this. Okay, this was not really a hit. So I'm going to roll off of this. Yeah, if we had found a dwarf here, then we would have gotten a tier 3 treasure. That would have been a reasonable power spike too. So unfortunately, we're not going to get that. But I think we did still get a huge power spike this turn. In the upgrade for Fanny and the Lordy, and then putting the doubly in. That's going to be better than Princess White, doubly. We'll just backline the doubly. Maybe it'll get a buff from Angry. This is, this is make or break time. Is one Lordy big enough to save us from the player that's been crushing this lobby for a minute? No, they've got double good boy, plus Court Wizard, and some other stuff. This cannot be good enough. And we are going to lose. That is a really big uh, guy, though, uh, Tweedledee. But we're not going to be able to make it past their Lancelot. So that is going to mark the end for us in this game. And hopefully we can eke to fourth, but I think we're going... Or 
not fourth. Um, definitely not fourth. I meant to say fifth, but okay. So we do get a fifth place uh, run. It's a little bit of shame because there is a break point between fourth and fifth. And yesterday, we did not have a single result that was worse than fourth. But I don't feel that bad about this, especially as a catter game. I felt like, other than the very, very early game where we had that big egg, once myself and my opponent cracked each other's big eggs, then I started to feel like I was behind. I think I still played it really well. There were just some other people really able to power spike with... Uh, some some powerful hero powers so there you go there's day two game one and honestly this is a pretty straightforward game um a lot of stuff just transitioned into dwarves on level three we cast the true love's kiss and that turned into a greedy and then in level four we did the masquerade ball and found an early angry so we were finding good dwarves ahead of the curve found a lordy pretty quickly after hitting six and uh, using some XP to get there as well. So all of that was pretty acceptable and just gave us like a middle of the road finish. It wasn't anything super powerful. Uh, and um, yeah, wind up taking fifth place. Not, not the best place to be, obviously. It's a lot more points to get fourth, but uh, a fifth is much better than getting uh, sixth, seventh, or eighth when you are playing one of the less uh, less coveted heroes in the game. Uh, but that's going to be it for me. Not today. There will be one other video today and then two videos tomorrow, one on Monday as we wrap up day two of the December Spring Championship Qualifier. Thanks for watching. I'm No Looks Given. Peace. I'm going to be giving away a 700 gem bundle at the end of this month, and here's how you can enter for your chance to win. First things first, subscribe to this channel. That won't enter you into the raffle, but you will have to be subscribed to win. In order to enter into the raffle, all you have to do is comment on a Storybook Brawl video including this one. Every time you comment on a Storybook Brawl video on my channel this month, you'll get a raffle ticket for my January giveaway. If you comment on a video within the first 72 hours of me posting it, then you get two raffle tickets. And if you comment on a video within the first 24 hours of me posting it, I'll give you three raffle tickets. Might also offer more ways to enter in the future. Uh, I don't want to break the economy of this. I want the main way to enter to be commenting. So leave a comment right now. Let me know what you think of the giveaway and of the video. And thanks for watching.